Hey guys, it's Malekith with the start of my Fall of the Samurai Shogun 2 campaign. Um, I'm not going to be like stopping my uh, Crusader Kings 2 campaign, so don't worry about that. This will be running in parallel with that. So uh, I've opted to select the Chosu. Choshu. I'm not sure it's how it's pronounced. Obviously my attempts at Japanese are never going to be accurate. Uh, I'm going for a domination campaign. I'm leaving the difficulty at normal. Um, I might be able to change it later, I'm not sure, but I'm just out of practice with this and I can't remember half of how it works but I will be leaving battle realism mode on so um, my line of sight in fights will be limited and I'll have mi uh, sort of minimal information on enemy units uh, I'm not setting a time limit it's one thing that I've just never liked about sort of the Total War series at all uh, CPU moves are off and there's no drop in battles so I'll just uh, mute myself while you guys watch the intro After the Sengoku Jidai, peace reigned for 200 years. In Kyoto, the emperor continued as divine head of state. But real power was held by the Tokugawa shogunate. For two centuries, they ruled with absolute authority. Japan prospered. The people were content. In 1853, American warships changed everything. The shogun abandoned his people and signed the Treaty of Peace and Amity. The gates to Japan were open. Trade was established, but the agreements favor the Western powers. The economy faltered, and the people suffered. In 1863, the emperor overruled the shogun. An imperial decree ordered the expulsion of all Western powers. No longer would Japan be westernized. The time had come to strike back. Western powers gave the answer. Prepare to run out the guns. On my command, fire! The treacherous Westerners brought death to our people. The Shogun no longer commanded respect or loyalty. Imperial rule had to be restored. To strengthen our position, the Emperor made peace with the British. We will study their ways and discover their secrets. Only then 
Can we destroy the Shogun and return Ona to Japan? The Emperor must be victorious. Choshu Domain, descended from the once great Mori clan, our family has suffered under the Tokugawa Shogunate for our opposition during the Sengoku Jidai. Now, the very same Shogunate has been manipulated by Western powers. For the good of all Japan, we must ensure that power is restored to the Emperor. Our first priority should be to strengthen ties with domains who share our view. We can expect support from the imperialist domains to the west, but here on the mainland, we will face strong opposition from shogunate loyalists. Imperialist control of Kyoto and Edo is vital if we are to wrest power from the shogunate, and so we should march eastward, crushing all who stand in our way. When full-scale war finally erupts between Imperial and Shogunate forces, the people of Kyushu will be at the vanguard, leading Japan into a bright and glorious future. Long live the Emperor! So apparently it's Kyushu, which is absolutely nothing like what I was pronouncing it on the uh, loading screen. So we'll see if I can remember that. I have a, a bad memory for names, but I will do my best. So the first mission is to uh, increase my clan's development level and you get a, a nice inspiring endeavours buff from that which increases the wealth generated by buildings across all provinces for 12 turns so that uh, would be a good thing to get. So let's have a look at the diplomacy tree or not tree, screen. So we're currently enemies with the province on the south of us, or southeast. Uh, we're very friendly with the province across the uh, uh, like narrow strait. Unfriendly with one of the other provinces on the island down there. Uh, indifferent, and indifferent with the people to the north. So, I mean, there's, you've got the uh, the Satsuma clan down here who are of similar allegiance. So I, I may sort of just leave them to expand out this way. Now concentrate on pushing east, but uh, obviously the first port of call will be the guys we're already hostile with, which to our southeast, which would be these guys. So let's have a look what we've got. What do you wish of me? We got a uh, Eshin Shishi. No idea if it's pronounced again. It can persuade enemy troops to join your cause, incite revolts in enemy cities, and assassinate enemy characters. So let's. Send him into the town, I guess, would be a good start. Uh, actually, as it costs money, I'm just going to use him as a scout instead. Your next command, my lord. Now, let's have a look at the province. We only own one so far. Uh, we have clay pits, which bring in a nice amount of trade money. So, um, I'm going to Upgrade those. We have a port. I'm not sure if I want to upgrade that just yet. The the fields obviously bring in wealth from farms. So that's worth having. Uh, police station. Or a larger stronghold. Or a larger town, which increases modernization, increases tax, and unlocks an additional construction slot, which is what I really want, because then I can get some sort of barracks to get uh, some better units and spears out. So we'll hit that one. You can see the clan income's 843. What units have I got in garrison? A unit of spear and the general, uh, or the, the daimyo even. In the army itself, yes, got a uh, set of, I think the, these guys are skirmishers. Sort of the, the Japanese musketmen as opposed to the more sort of westernized ones of the line infantry. Uh, some spear levy, some proper spearmen, and a general, of course, one star. It's pretty loyal. So for now, I'm going to march him up to the border as just as a, a protective. Got a, a nice little 
indicator down here for the season, so middle of winter, so I don't want to be marching him in. He'll be taking sort of damage. Uh, what can we recruit? I'm going to get a couple of spear levy just to sort of act as a, a buffer. Boost these guys up a bit. Do I have a Navy at all? Yep. So we get a gunboat and a much bigger wooden corvette, Kite N class. Now I'm going to sail these up to the shore because this outer circle is their bombard radius. So I can now bombard that town. It didn't cause any damage. But the, uh, the more important bit is when I do attack, I want these guys in range because you can uh, get naval bombardments into battles, which if you can sort of guess what the enemy are going to be, uh, will cause significant damage. But it, it takes a while for the sort of the shells to land, if you like. But I will demonstrate that later. So for now, I think that's pretty much all I can do. So I'm going to end turn. Ah, I didn't look at research. I will take a look at that when this next turn comes around. So, where is it? Clan development. So currently we're researching epic architecture, which reduces the cost of constructing settlements and improves happiness clan-wide then sort of leads on to the wealth and those sorts of technologies. Military technologies, I'd quite like that one. That enables the recruitment of sharpshooters and some revolver cavalry, which should be interesting. But it's seven turns and this one's three. I may just sort of let it stick with the default one for now. Quartermaster's report, two new units raised. Let's march them out. My sword for you, my so we have this enemy unit, we can see one of them's a spear levy. Ready, Let's fire at him. Guns. Missed. Whoever's manning the uh, the guns on this boat is clearly not very good. And again, there, if you consider that distance in real life, I'm surprised they even know the enemy's there to shoot at them, to be honest. So we have a mission to take this province to uh, strengthen our position. The bonus for doing so increases the spread of pro-imperial sentiment across all provinces, plus two influence. So again, going to fire on them. So this guy took 77 casualties. Not to be sniffed at, really. Um, how much cash do I have? I could upgrade the port. But I think I'll save it for when the, the town's finished, ready for the next building and uh, an army recruitment. So let's just end the turn again. Should swash into uh, spring shortly. Just looking at these names scrolling by at the top, I sure hope I don't have to pronounce half of them. Definitely sticking with the stereotype of Engli uh, ignorant Englishmen. Destroy them. So, the general took 38 casualties. So, somehow magically we know we hit the general even though we don't know the general's in there. It's uh, a small oversight, but I guess it's not really that important. So we've got the technology researched, and spring has come, 
So everyone gets plus one happiness for six turns. Let's have a look. What do we want? So 7% reduction to administration costs, plus 10% wealth generated by farms. But I don't have that many provinces, so a percentage increase isn't that great at the moment. Plus 1 to modernization, plus 10 to diplomatic relations. Sounds reasonable, what's after it? Merchant houses, more to do with diplomatic relations. This seems to be the sort of diplomacy tree. So military, you've got the Banzai ability, fire arrows, but I don't have any archers. Unit replenishment, which leads on to shipyards and shinobi. I think I'll go with the guns. It's seven turns, which is the longest one here, I think, but go to this. But it's uh, probably for the best. So we'll bombard these guys again. Failed to do anything. Four units. Probably if I. I'm not sure if I attack them whether these guys can come out or not, as they're a garrison. So we've built our clay kiln. So you can see our income has gone up. Let's. Uh, let's go. Oh no, he retreated. Fair enough. In which case, I'll just march back again. In fact, I'll we go hide in the trees. An ambush, my lord. Your orders, sir. That yeah, is I already shot those, didn't I? Cool. Let's wait for that town to reach completion. Ally attacked. The aggressor is the Oka. Hmm, I have no idea where that is. They do have quite a few allies, including me, so I guess I'll enter that war. Now we see where the Oka live. Okay, so they're down here. So this province, not really bothered. So we've got a new slot, what can we build? Traditional dojo, so that's got your uh, sort of spearmen and those kind of guys in. Cadet school for line infantry and cavalry. Cottage industry for money, An inn for geisha. Matchlock towers, it's for defense. Uh, wooden cannons. It's intriguing. A training camp that just reduces the cost of things. Now, do we want cannons or line infantry? I guess cannons are more for castles and line infantry are kind of the basis of most armies. I'll get line infantry for now and uh, the next province I get I'll probably go with a cannon. So that's going to take three turns. Your orders, my lord. Marching now. Let's sneak Wait into that ambush ready. point. Right, just move these guys forward a bit so they can ambush some more. But oh, 128 casualties. That's uh, more significant. Now one of my boats got a nice promotion out of it too. They've retreated back into their town again. They don't have any in here as much as I thought they would. Ready for orders. Fire. I'm reluctant to just charge straight in Ready with what I've got though, because I don't have much in the way of firepower, it's mostly levy. What can we construct? Hmm. Another giant farm upgrade. 
I've got to wait two turns for the cadet school to be done, so oh, I have 1,800 sort of to buy uh, my troops after that's done. My lord. Let's do some exploring. Making my way. Can I be of further assistance? As you command, I await new orders. So you got Hiroshima up here. Uh, peace with them. At Just wander once, back again. I shall rest, my lord. I will pose and rest. So these men are increasing rank, I guess by doing absolutely nothing. Uh, let's give him a retainer. Uh, plus five percent chance to escape. Plus one to repression. Um, I'll give him a chance to escape. Now, what can he do? Plus one to zero when assassinating. Plus one to zero when instilling fervor. Persuading troops and rallying the populace. Mm, what sort of routes do these go down? Map line of sight, converting provinces, inciting revolts. So this one's the more aggressive one. I'll go for that. And bring him back down. Uh, there's not much chance of success, and I'd rather save the gold for uh, training troops in the next turn. Can't remember if I fired my boats there, I probably missed the opportunity. with a unit of cavalry and a unit of line infantry. I can probably chuck out some more next turn. Don't think I'll quite have enough to get two out of it. And I missed the chance to fire my boats again. Excellent. My brain's fried and I've only just started. And let's have another spear levy just because I can. So one of the clans has been destroyed, the Oka. So that was the guys we were at war with down here. So they are now owned by some uh the guys further down the coast captured them. Fine by me. So, let's continue this bombardment that I keep forgetting. So, next turn. Oh, here we go. Ally attacked. Aggressor Satsuma. Hmm, I don't really want to go against them as they're definitely on the uh, side of the Emperor. So I think I will uh, ditch my ally. So here we have summer. Plus five percent to unit replenishment rate. So let's march my three new units in. Bombard some more, missed. Uh, their army's increasing. Which isn't really what I wanted. I may just have to bite the bullet and uh, go for it. So what are they? They're mostly levies. 
But uh, I'm not going to charge in. I'm going to make them come to me. So we'll just continue the siege. So you can see this would support the fight. So they're coming out to face me. They'll have two of the daimyo and the general on horseback. Unit spears, unit of levy spears, some matchlocks, and then a lot of levy infantry. So let's go. So we can see from the, uh, the sort of sand table effect here, they start on the high ground, but as they're attacking me, I don't intend to go to them at all, so they can come down the hill to me. I'm wondering if I can make use of these trees down here. If I start the majority of my troops over, I could get a nice defensive position out of it, I think. just depends on the altitude of it. I think it's the same height as this whole region, so they wouldn't be shooting down at me, that's for sure. So let's go have a look physically. Yeah, it's uh, there's no massive altitude advantage to them. So we'll do that. Sort these out properly. Ready for order. On the line, sir. We shall cut them down. So I'm gonna have to form the majority of my battle line once it actually starts. Some matchlocks. Which I nearly forgot. So the gaps I need to plug will be. I can have a unit of uh, shooting up there. We need the map edge that way. Hmm. Can't decide. Cause it is quite a limiting space for my own troops to be able to react to things. Oh well, we'll see how it goes. So go. We are ready to defend, sir. Actually, if I do it this way. This guy's there. Another spear levy on this flank. Keep the good spearmen as a reserve. The general. And I'll have the matchlocks as a reserve as well. So you can see my naval support over here. It's uh, a two minute before I can call it in. I may make use of that altitude. Um, where are these spearmen going? So these guys are going there. So I've put them lower down. I should be able to stand the... What I was keeping in reserve matchlocks sort of above them so they can shoot over maybe. I may want to move them slightly further down. Or actually, if I stand them off to the side, then they definitely get shot in the back of the head. But they can still charge in as defense if need be. The reserves can sit over a bit closer.
So you can see they're sending match locks initially and some levy infantry. Where are my horsemen? Where'd I put them? Ah, they're right at the back there. Um, I'm not sure where I'm going to want these guys. For now, I'll move them over on this far right flank. They can run down it and flank in on someone if they need to them. You can see the range we've got, they're uh, quite a way off yet. My naval support's nearly ready for the first time. But uh, I want them to group up a bit first. Actually, if I fire an area bombardment, let's go with there, that gives some time to walk into it. Probably could have done a more focused one if I'd planned the time a bit better, but it might work. They seem to have seen it coming. And nicely spreading out. Here it comes. Oh, so we got some nice hits there. Yep, that just took out sort of 70 guys. 13. A few from the, uh, the rear guys. So that was, uh, wasn't too bad. So units are starting to come into range down the front here. Probably move these guys forward, they seem to have a bit shorter range. So the general's coming into range first, which could be painful for him. Yep, he lost a lot there. These guys. Uh, match locks. Save us at the rear. Your men have killed their general, sir. That voiceover reminds me so much of the uh, American sort of lieutenant colonel from Sharp. Is it Leroy? I can't remember. I'm sure someone will uh, post in the comments. It's not quite there on the accent, but uh, it's close enough. We've got 40 seconds before we can uh, fire again. Hopefully the line infantry can batter off these guys. They didn't seem to like that initial volley, that's for sure. And they're riding right across the front of all the units, like an extremely stupid general. Hopefully these guys will open fire on them as well now. Cavalry are nearly broken, but pull them back and charge into this general at the same time. Sir, your general is under attack. My general's under attack? Lies. So we've got a focus bombardment. Let's drop it in. Okay, let's go for area. Drop it in there. Oops, should have paid more attention on this flank.
Where are my cavalry going? Get back here. It's got a spear garrison running in. Here comes the cannons. Oh, nice. Bodies everywhere, although for somehow the majority of them stand out. My cavalry are again doing whatever the hell they want. I'm just going to have to spam the order until they actually do what they're told. Your victory is close, sir. So this left flank's running. In fact, the whole army's running. So there we go. Battle over. Decisive victory. So as you saw there, guys, decisive victory. Um, I'm going to cut the episode there. I sort of reached the sort of 30 minute period that I was aiming for with this video. I'm trying to keep them to that length because it's manageable for you guys to watch. It's also manageable for me to record and upload without sort of negatively impacting my internet connection, which means you'll get them more frequently because it's not an issue for me to do them. So if you have any comments or uh, improvements, feel free to add them into the uh, YouTube video comments. As I said earlier in the video, I haven't played this for a very long time, so I'm sure I'm missing some of the smaller intricacies. Um, pointing them out will be helpful for both me and other people watching. Thanks for watching, guys.